Pastor Kelly Richardson. I'm going to do a video. It's going to be all about Richard Katz, the Hebrew on the pews. Just for you, a special video. If you follow the back and forth between the Christian apologetic community and the apologist of Hebrew Israelism, you've no doubt seen the claim that discernible Hebrew writing appears in Savannah, Georgia on the pews at a church called First African Baptist Church. Look at the ancient writings. These are, these are writings from our ancestors. This is the information that they want to blot out. This is the information that they don't want us to know about. This Hebrew on the pew thesis is so prominent, it even showed up in battle rapper Street Hymns interview. Watch this clip. And on the side of the pews is Hebrew writing. The Hebrew language was not revived until, according to America, I think 1881. You know, why is it that this Landino is being spoken with? Because they had a language before they arrived here, you know what I'm saying? So if that language was pure to them and this is what they were writing on the side of the pews and no one taught it to them, I think that's worth seeing. That's what he said. You may be wondering where I am. You might probably guess Savannah, Georgia at the church under question. You'd be wrong. I'm in Henrico, Virginia at a church under the leadership of Pastor Kelly Richardson. What does this have to do with supposed Hebrew writing on pews in Georgia? Here's why. The loudest and most confident voice for the Hebrew on the pews thesis is a man who calls himself Dr. Kelly Richardson. Now, it's not publicly known which institution awarded Mr. Richardson his doctoral degree or even his field of study. But what is known is that Mr. Richardson pastors a Hebrew Israelite church called Passion for Reconciliation Ministries right here in Henrico, Virginia. I'm not going to say I know the words. I can identify some of the letters. And okay. when I was meeting with one of the, um, the staff down there and I pulled out my research and pulled up the letters, his mouth dropped. He said, literally said to me that I was the first person to ever do that. Recently, the Hebrew on the Pew's thesis has been subjected to scholarly scrutiny, especially by Semitic language specialists. You guessed it, no one has been able to show any coherent Hebrew therein. Not a single soul, not a single letter. This includes advocates for the Hebrew on the Pew thesis. In fact, not even the good doctor himself has identified what the alleged Hebrew on the pew actually says. On both sides, not just on this side, on both sides you'll see uh, the, the writings on the pews. I mean, and I wish I could fully read what they, what they wrote here and unfortunately no one um, has been able to decipher, it, to decipher exactly what they say. But one thing, again, we do confirm is that it is um, a Shemitic language. Well, if no one can tell us what it says in Hebrew, then how does anyone know it is truly Hebrew? Now, I'm not saying that I can read what's on the pews, but I can identify some of those letters. You know, so again, I want to make it clear at one time, there was talk within the Hebrew Israelite apologetics community of mere resemblances to individual letters. Advocates did not give much consideration that the presence of language is determined from the presence of words and phrases. See, the presence of any given language is determined from the presence of language-specific words and language-specific phrases. For example, a cruciform might look like a Latin T. A circle might look like a Latin O. A triangle might look like a Greek delta. So, to do it right, something more than the presence of those ambiguous symbols 
must be present for serious students to conclude that meaningful Latin or Greek in the above example is actually present. Now, this new scrutiny has shown Richardson's Hebrew on the Pew thesis to be a paper tiger, an empty suit, a house of cards, BS. How has Kelly Richardson responded to this new academic examination of his thesis? Poorly and dishonestly. In November 2020, Mr. Richardson and his cousin, Pastor William Brown of the Boom Church in Atlanta. I'm warning you right now. Don't mention my name. Don't mention Boom Church name. Don't mention Believers of One Messiah name. Another Hebrew Israelite congregation declared that renowned Hebrew scholar, Dr. David Bunis, had confirmed the presence of an entire sentence on the pews in the Sola Treo script. Needless to say, this revelation caused quite a stir on the internet. Richardson and Brown even gave a translation of the alleged Hebrew sentence. Take grasp of Yah, O Israel, with a bass voice. So not only does it say take a grasp of God, but it says take a grasp of Yah or God, Israel, with a bass voice, as you put it, or with a loud voice, meaning praise him loudly. So not only did it confirm what it sees, what it says here in, you know, take or grasp the way of the Lord or God, um, he confirms the way you laid it out. Can we find a coherent sentence? Well, yeah, we just did. And not only that, we got a scholar to back it. So we know what the actual language is. We know what's on the pews. We know what the specific pew says. We haven't broken down all of the pews, but we don't need to break down all of them. We got at least one pew that we can that we can know that is it that it is Hebrew on the pews. Okay, so let's we done with all this conversation about Arabic. Okay, oddly, they never showed Professor Bunis confirming the sentence. They never provided the sentence itself. They never showed the specific markings the sentence was supposedly translated from. They never showed a picture of the alleged pew which allegedly contained the alleged sentence. It's almost as if they wanted to eliminate any possibility that any outside source could evaluate their shoddy claim for themselves. Later, via a set of documented email exchanges, Professor Bunis himself revealed he never suggested any such sentence. Professor Bunis wrote that he explicitly told Will Brown that he did not think Solitreo appeared in the markings he was shown. Professor Bunis stated he had been badly misrepresented. Now you may think that's the end of this wild tale of dubious archeology span and secret emails. Nope, <laughs> we're just getting started. Immediately after the controversy over the misrepresentation of Bunis, Richardson and Brown told the world they didn't have to rely on just one scholar. They unveiled a second scholar, Tel Aviv-based Hebrew professor, Dr. Richard Katz. These linguistic sleuths revealed that Dr. Katz explicitly said in email correspondence that he had found the Hebrew phrase B'nai Israel on one of the pews. If true, this would be a strong piece of confirmatory evidence in favor of their Hebrew on the pews thesis. However, Kelly and Brown never showed the markings or the pew which allegedly contained that phrase, an essential piece of information which continued to suffer from omission. Christian apologists quickly noticed that there was no trace of this Tel Aviv-based Hebrew scholar named Richard Katz. He is nowhere in the academic or popular literature, not even a relevant entry on a related website. No paper trail, no digital trail, a ghost. Even more strange, the emails from Katz, which were shown, bore a writing style similar to the writing style of one Will Brown. For example, Professor Katz referred to himself as a PhD with a capital H, a mistake 
which no PhD would make. David Wood, you have a PhD, right? Yes, I do. You, would you ever put capital P, capital H, capital D? Never in a million years. Would anyone who has a PhD make that mistake? No chance. What's PhD stand for? Doctor of Philosophy. Thank you. Those who hold a PhD know the H is never capitalized. Coincidentally, this curious detail also appeared in Will Brown's use of that acronym, capital P, capital H, capital D. To sort this all out, an inquisitive apologist wrote an email to the email address attributed to Dr. Katz. This man, Abu Kamer, received a reply from Dr. Katz. Analysis of the metadata revealed that the email from Katz was composed on the same exact device Will Brown used, a Samsung, same model, same everything. Katz's email was sent via the same application, not via online, same application on a phone. The same exact updated version of the Yahoo Mail app. Katz's email even came through the same Yahoo server, which an email from Will Brown had gone through thus bearing the same sender policy framework. Abu knew this from analysis of prior emails between Brown and himself. This identical IP demonstrates both Katz and Brown were in the same region of the USA. But Katz is supposed to be in Israel. Later claimed it was because Katz was on vacation in Georgia when he responded to the email. It was quite obvious that the Tel Aviv-based Hebrew scholar, Richard Katz, doesn't exist. He's a sock puppet. There is no Katz. His emails were composed by Kelly Richardson's cousin, Will Brown. Don't mention We Woke Now. Don't mention Pastor for Reconciliation. Don't mention Pastor Kelly Richardson's name. There's really no way around it. Everybody know how bad that Katz thing uh, happened. The way we need to ensure that we shut it down is when people start throwing that up. My go-to has been, that's not a conversation piece for me to handle. We need to direct that to majors. Let majors handle it. So if cats come up again, that's not our discussion point, I would say, and just send them right to majors. That's for Brown and them to deal with. I don't like how that whole thing went down, so I don't even discuss it. Even fellow Hebrew Israelites believe Brown was lying. And I'm, this is just between us. Me and majors have not talked since then. I don't even talk to majors. None of us talk to majors. Yeah, none of us do. Um, but because... To be honest with you, I don't even... I don't, I don't even... I, I don't even go to his channel no more. Oh, I yes. I don't even... Yes. People are like, well, E, why don't you blast him? Right now, our community is still rebuilding from this incident. Me blasting majors publicly, because, again, I'm 95% sure think that majors is live. But I still don't have that 5%. I need that well, 5%. Yeah. Let's put this virtual ventriloquist act in proper perspective. If there really is discernible Hebrew on the pews in Savannah, why would the primary proponents of that view need to badly represent one scholar and then literally invent another? After all this damaging information came to light, Kelly Richardson threatened to sue various people who questioned him on the pews. Brown initially replied with a YouTube community post saying Richard Katz was going to sue us. And all that sue talk, you ain't suing nothing, man. Why the hell he suing everybody because he made it up? <laughs> How you gonna sue somebody when you made it up? Technically, if I wanted to go legal on these guys, I can literally take a legal case out on them because they are what, defaming my character. Correct. On your screen is my favorite Facebook post from the end of last year. Uh, in it, our good friend over at the Boom Church was saying that in the coming year, 2021, folks better lawyer up. Including me. If I hear or see any images of me in your videos, I will take legal actions against you and vocab. I'm going to take your channel down. Not only that, but if you mention my, our names at any time after this, then the next step is going to take place. It won't be just filing a trademark. It's going to be filing something else. Richardson slandered those who questioned him on the pews, including other Hebrew Israelites. The Moors. They were some of the biggest sellouts of, of our community. That's a fact. So 
Don't trust them. They still want to operate in that spirit. Yes, I was going to take legal action. And actually, I consulted with my lawyer about the slandering things that was going on. And the only reason why I stopped is because my lawyer told me that these guys have no influence. Richardson even promoted a fanciful story about the mythical Professor Katz having to go into secluded hiding after sinister Christians threatened his job. That's why he couldn't reveal what institution supposedly employed Katz. Seriously. One thing Mr. Richardson has not done, however, is have a straightforward discussion with any of us, or even amongst his co-religionists, regarding the proper methodology for interpreting the markings on the pews. And more recently, Kelly has invoked a number of new secret scholars in his defense. He claims he needs to keep their identity secret, like Spider-Man, to protect them from the threats and harassment, which he alleges befell the cat's sock puppet. Kelly has asserted that those secret scholars have not only confirmed Hebrew on the pews, but so too Aramaic and Amharic. Interestingly, however, he still has not shown any coherent statements in any of those languages in the markings. We are merely expected to take Kelly and Will on their word that secret scholars told them that such languages are found somewhere in the markings. Please. Kelly's supporters might object that Kelly did recently propose one string of Hebrew characters, which he claims form a completely ahistorical spelling of the word Israel, with five yods and a Zion, but no sin or aleph. The barely coherent string of characters he proposed strains credulity. Kelly has ignored detailed examinations of the vague markings he pointed to, for which a variety of more plausible readings have been proposed, including a coherent and well-attested Arabic phrase suggested by multiple flesh and blood scholars. It looks like Arabic in the West African script, and it could very well be a three-word snippet of chapter 114 of the Qur'an, which nearly every Muslim would know and use for ritual prayer. I can't be certain without more context, but it looks like al-nas, ilahi al-nas, humanity, the god of humanity, from the middle of that chapter. In fact, the Savannah Church's own website used to say that it was a West African Arabic script. This, unfortunately, has been recently changed after pressure applied by Hebrew Israelite activists. As a side note, notice the fundamental error in the Hebrew on the pews argument. If it is Arabic, it doesn't mean the folks who wrote the markings were Arabs. This is Arabic type of writing. Hmm. It's amazing that it survived. Oh yes, they may be Christian themselves, mm. but for them, religion is a continuity. Likewise, even if it is Hebrew, which it's not, the presence of Hebrew on a pew would not guarantee the ethnicity of the individual being Semitic, let alone everybody in the congregation being Hebrews. There are other, more likely, possible options for the pew markings anyway. Accidental markings by people, perhaps children, they do resemble random scratches, or even perhaps residual wood glue stains. Another realistic option is that it's medullary rings, which are natural growths that appear in the rings of trees. These botanical patterns are especially frequent in oak, and the pews are made out of oak. Yet another option is that it's a simple case of pareidolia. Pareidolia is the human tendency to see patterns where there are none, such as seeing the Virgin Mary on a grilled cheese sandwich. This is perhaps the most likely explanation. After years of examination, proponents of the Hebrew on the Pew's thesis have not shown any coherent Hebrew in the markings. The best they offer is near gibberish, arrived at while trying to interpret vague markings in a method reminiscent of seeing shapes in clouds. These facts, combined with threats of litigation, attempts at misdirection, 
the misrepresentation, and even Brown's naked fabrication of scholars should leave any thoughtful person extremely skeptical about the claim that Hebrew appears on the pews in Savannah, Georgia. Next time I come to Passion for Reconciliation Ministries here in Henrico, Virginia, maybe Kelly and I can have a sit down and talk about this. Or if William Brown would like to do this, I'll be down to travel to Atlanta, Georgia and talk to him. And I'm telling you right now, if you want your channel, don't mention our name again. Maybe Brown could even introduce me to Richard Katz himself. I would love to meet Dr. Katz next time he's vacationing in Atlanta, Georgia. All right, very good. One more basic point must be made about all this before we close. If the people who labored to build this church in Savannah thought they were Israelites, then why did they name their church the First African Baptist Church? Whoever these people were that were my ancestors were the ones who put, put their hands to build these and write these letters on there. That's who I'm connected to. And they call themselves Hebrews. So I call myself Hebrew. The First African Baptist Church. African, not Israelite. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that it. Dope. So when they show up on the property and they leave and do videos like this, to me, it's no different than uh, uh, putting a cross on the property, burning a cross as a form of intimidation. Stalking, because this is considered stalking. Traveling from Arizona to Virginia, this is stalking. Stalking. To show that what? You'd be wrong.